What's up guys, Sam here. Welcome back to another tutorial. Today we're gonna to be making a t-shirt design using only one photo. Now this tutorial is perfect if you're new to Photoshop and merch design. However, trust me, there's always something new to learn and even if you're a pro, you might find something useful. If you want to follow along, then the photo and the font will be available to download in the description below. And obviously the only other thing you'll need is Photoshop. Thank you again guys for all the support so far. We seem to jump from 100 subscribers to 200 in no time at all. So I really, really appreciate that. If you're not following me on Instagram already, then the link for that will be in the description below. And that's kind of where I keep up to date with everybody because at the moment I don't have a community tab. If you find the tutorial useful, then consider subscribing and checking out some of my other videos. Let's get started. So I always breeze over this bit in my other tutorials. However, let's just go over it. So everybody knows how to set up document correctly for printing a t-shirt or just making a t-shirt that will be printed later. So I always use 15 by 18 inches. It just works really well for me. And I've, I've seen a lot of people use this as well. Most people will always use 15 width and it will be the height that changes depending on the design. And some people just like a longer canvas to work on, that's fine. But 15 across, pretty standard I'd say. 300 resolution because we're printing. RGB color mode and black as the background. The background will change depending on what color t-shirt the design is gonna go on. Okay, so let's create that. So first things first, let's bring in the photo that we're gonna be using and resize it to the size we want. It's gonna be, I wanted it to be a bit of a smaller, more minimalistic design on a t-shirt. So I'm not gonna worry about stretching it all the way out, but something around here will be fine. That would be good. And first thing we're gonna do is remove the background. So come over to the left-hand side and select the pen tool over here. And all we're gonna do is go round the hands, making a selection like that. And take your time with this because the cutouts are the most annoying, tedious part of the, the whole process, but getting it right really does make a difference. You don't wanna be going back after you've made the design, realizing you haven't cut things out properly. So take your time on this bit, get it done nicely and I'll see you after I've made my selection. Okay, so once we've gone around the entire <laughs> the entirety of the photo, that took forever, I fucking hate doing that. Um, you join up to the first one you made like this and we can right click and make a selection. And just don't change any of these, this is all good. Perfect, we made a selection. Now we come down here and click layer mask and then we're good. If we realize we missed some of the, some of the little bits, we can easily just go back in with a brush on the layer mask when it's selected. Black brush, zoom in, and we can then remove, see some of these yellow bits here, we can remove them easily. So the prep work's done now. The next thing to do is to play around with the levels of the photo, just to bring out some of the dark parts and bring out some of the highlights as well just to make the flower look vibrant and a little bit more detail in the hands okay that looks good and we're also going to add a black and white layer so the next thing to do is to remove the black and white from the flower but leave the hands still black and white and this is a cool photo effect uh, there's plenty of ways to do it in photoshop quite a few ways i know of and we're going to do it this way today which is probably the most simple, I guess. And that's just to click the little thumbnail down here on the black and white layer. And using a black brush, we can then remove the black and white filter from the flower. This does mean going back in and doing it gradually and slowly like the cutting out is pain in the ass, but it's worth doing it, take your time. And you'll get a much better effect at the end if you just slow down a bit and don't rush it. If we make a mistake, all we've got to do is swap the foreground color and we can paint in 
black and white again. So it really is that simple. It may not be perfect when you're zoomed in. However, when you zoom back out again, it will look a lot better, a lot neater. Always look what it looks worse when you're really close. So that's all the sunflower colored back in, looking good. So now I'm just gonna play around the levels again, just to see if we can bring out any more uh, detail in the hands or a little, bit, uh, a little bit more shadow like that. Perfect, so now let's select all these layers and duplicate them. And then with the duplicate, we're gonna create a smart object. And then when that loads, we can put the originals into a group. So we've got them in case we mess up anything. There we go, we'll call that original. If I can spell it, there we go. Okay. Hands. Why did that not come out as capitals? There we go. So the next step is to remove some of the blemishes here on the flower. You, If you like them, you could keep them, it's up to you, but I'm gonna get rid of them. So the t-shirt is perfect. Uh, so to use the next tool, we need to rasterize the layer. And then we're going to use the spot healing brush down here. Let's zoom in. And all we need to do is go over the, the parts that we want to get rid of. And it does a pretty damn good job of getting rid of them. Like this. I'm just being really picky. You can keep a lot of this stuff in there if you want to. So as you can see, the flower now looks pretty damn near perfect. Um, spot healing brush, really handy for getting rid of things like that and blemishes on skin, for example. So try to remember it's there because it does come in handy a lot. So the next thing I'm gonna do is just crop the hands a little bit um, and we'll probably add a little gradient at some point just to uh, clean up the bottom. Somewhere around there, inverse, delete. And now our hands look a little bit neater, which is nice. Yeah, and we might add a little gradient down the bottom here. See, what, when the text is there, you will, we'll kind of know what we're doing, but at the moment, that will be fine. So the next step is to invert half the image. So we want to invert one hand and half the sunflower. And to do this, we can use the pen tool to make a selection like we did at the start, but we're going to do something slightly different. So what we're going to do is zoom in, and we're going to try and select one hand, the right side, and a kind of natural selection of the flower, which might take a few attempts, but we'll see. So I'm gonna go along the black bit here. Try and go along this petal. And then I'm gonna just go straight up, I think. So we have half and then we'll kind of go up here. I think that would be the best way, otherwise it will kind of look a bit odd. Delete anchor point. Right click, make a selection. And then we're gonna control J. And that will throw up a copy of half the hand above our other half. And we won't know if it's gonna work till we invert it, so let's invert it. Image adjustments, invert. Uh, yeah, I think that's a pretty good job actually. I think that'll work. Let's add in our type, change color so I can actually see it. Vibrant. Vibrant and the font we are using is addition. So I wanted to see it nice and level under the hands. Photoshop will let me do that. My Photoshop always runs bad when I've got OBS running also, recording. 
around there looks good. So I think you could get away with the hands being like that, but I do actually want to add a gradient. So I've just decided actually that I think this t-shirt will look much better on white or on an off-white t-shirt at least. So let's have a look. Yeah, I think that looks a lot better, but we are going to have to clean up this little black bit. Um, possibly some other bits just to make sure it comes through on the white a lot cleaner. So let's apply a layer mask to the hands and just zoom in and take care of some of that. So seeing as we've got a layer mask, we might as well apply a sort of gradient manually rather than actually applying a gradient, if you know what I mean. So brush selected with 0% hardness and we can kind of paint in a sort of fade um, for the wrists here. And it'll kind of look a little bit more natural, I suppose, than applying the gradient. And we can bring the font right up if we want to. There we go, nice. That fits really nice. Uh, I think the font needs adjusting though in size. There we go, that looks about... There we go. Perfect. So the final part of the design is to make the little squares where the um, sunflower, the original the original colour of the sunflower can come through on the um, inverted part. So to do this we're going to make some rectangles, um, fill it with white, don't need a stroke. draw one around here and another slightly larger one around there and you can play around this just to get get the effect you want perfect and then all we need to do is change the blend mode to difference and that is going to let through the original color of the uh, of the flower so what difference does is basically gives you the opposite of what you've got already. Whatever's on it, it will give you the opposite. I think I went through this in one of my other tutorials, the one with the butterfly skull. So if you want a little bit more information on it, uh, check that tutorial out. But yeah, what it does is it just lets through the original color again. So it's really handy. Gives a cool little effect, as you can see. Now we're going to add a stroke to the little uh, rectangles. So they kind of look like windows. If you apply it to um, apply it on the uh, inside, you'll get a nice sharp corner, and that looks pretty good. I think about 16 seems to work. I think I could try try 20. Yeah, 20 looks nice. Kind of want to be able to see it when it's small, so a little bit thicker, I reckon. Yeah, it looks good. I like it. So that is that's the finished design, I think. So let's mock it up on a t-shirt and see how it looks. Guys, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you found the video useful, remember to leave a like and subscribe and I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace out.